Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Today we are looking at all the cool gear that uh, I saw at Cinegear 2019. The big camera news from the show was the Panasonic S1H. This is a 6K full frame DSLR um, designed to shoot video, designed to shoot cinema, um, and it retails around $4,000. The specs on this are pretty impressive, but once I actually got to see the showreel and the camera um, used, I was a little less impressed. In fact, kind of uh, mystified. I don't know why in 2019 you would want to buy a DSLR to shoot video. Um, I think it's great to have a DSLR to shoot photos with and use as a B camera or to shoot documentaries with. Guess Panasonic is going after all their upgrading GH4, GH5 people, but uh, I think if this camera was $2,000, it'd be slam dunk, $2,500, but at four grand, you're only maybe $1,000, $1,500 less than the Ava 1, which Panasonic make, which has all the things that you actually need to shoot a film. It has XLR, proper audio controls, real form factor, you know, a top handle, um, something that you can actually use rather than a tiny little DSLR in your hand that gets all kinds of micro jitters and you have to you know spend another couple of thousand dollars on um, rigging out with all the shoulder attachments and battery attachments and all the issues that you we had when we shot DSLR that digital video cameras digital cinema cameras were um, invented to overcome and to go back to DSLR now seems really weird. The reason people shoot so much on the GH5 is it's a really great image for only 1500 bucks. Um, I don't think those people want to drop $4,000 on a slightly better full frame DSLR. I think those people um, want a, ch a better GH5. The showreel for this, which I can't remember who shot it, looked terrible. It looked like a 5D Mark II showreel. Uh, you know, it was really underexposed a lot of the time and it was just really like every cliche camera show reel um, from the early 2000s. It just looked looked bad. I mean, and that's saying something because most camera show reels look pretty terrible, but this one, I just don't think Panasonic get it. Every year at Cinegear, there are the things you kind of expect. There are things that you um, f have finally arrived that uh, you've been waiting for for years and then things that just kind of come out of the blue that you're like wow they can do that that's amazing so portable a company called portable electric have um, generators that aren't generators they are they are giant batteries on wheels that you would tow into your um, location film set to run your lights and your whole facilities none of the annoying engines that mess up all your sound and cause fumes. Yeah, you can even charge them while you're using them with solar. Uh, I didn't really get into how much they cost. I'm sure it's a rental thing, just like no one's going to go out and buy their own generator. But if I was shooting something tomorrow um, in a remote location and I wanted to power the entire um, film set, uh, this is definitely the way I go because like I said, no fuel issues, no sound issues. Um, and yeah, it just makes it a lot easier to work behemoths of the um, on-set monitor world, Atomos and Small HD, both had whole new ranges of displays. But interestingly, they're starting to diverge. Uh, Small HD brought out two new monitors, a 13 and a 17 inch, both with integrated wireless. Um, Small HD are uh, owned by the same company as Teradek. And the excellent Focus 7 Bolt that I have a review coming out soon um, is a monitor with wireless receiver integration. So now they've stepped that up to the 13 and the 17 inch, which means that you can just open these things, put them on a stand, turn them on and start shooting, uh, which is awesome. No wires involved. Interestingly, they the 17 and the 13 inch are both around the same price. I think they're like five and a half grand each. Atomos brought out their own range of larger um, onset monitors, but instead of doing the inbuilt um, receiver, they went with the inbuilt recorder. So these things are um, kind of like the Sumo, they can have all sorts of bells and whistles. They are HDR, they are 4K, they come in 17, 24, 31, and 55 inch if you really want a uh, giant television on your set to show your clients. Um, but they have inbuilt recorders like the Sumo uh, to solid state drive and you record you know, ProRes 422, 444, and also ProRes RAW which is their um, proprietary format with Apple, uh, which gives you a lot of um, 
flexibility in post. And these are for, I, you know, and they're very competitively priced. The 17 inch is about four grand, the 21 inch is about six, and it goes up from there. Um, but they looked beautiful um, being 4K HDR uh, in the booth or showroom. Um, they looked really impressive. Quasar Science, whose gear I have and use a lot, have been branching out out of their um, tube form factor and are going with a really interesting sort of four Fresnels in an inbuilt array. Uh, I didn't get the name of this thing. I couldn't find it on the website afterwards, uh, but it is super bright, apparently brighter than a SkyPanel uh, S360. Something I was super interested to check out was a car shooting setup by a company called PMG. They make large video screens and they have this four wall um, car set. So it's um, two sides, the back and a roof that sits over the top of the car and projects video so that you can um, film two or three or four people in a car um, pretty much live action. Um, you don't have to do any green screening. You don't have to do any lighting. The, the video screens are now bright enough that they'll actually light your talent as well as put reflections in there. So you have all kinds of control, uh, how you shoot, where you shoot. Um, it really is you know, the, the latest and greatest way to do um, car scenes. Probably the downside is the cost. Uh, they don't have a standing set. I mean, they don't have like a facility that you can just drive a car to and shoot in. You actually have to pay for them to come out, um, set up, shoot, and then break down. And I think the guy said that the cost's around um, 40 to 50K a day, uh, which includes, um, you know, the set rental and the, um, all the labor, which is the biggest part of, you know, lots and lots of technicians to come in and set up the video screens and get them running. What would be great is if they had a place like that um, in the production hubs like New York or LA that you could just come to uh, with a car or hire a car, shoot in for a couple of hours and then get out. And if you could, if you could do that for like $5,000, um, you could, they could really transform um, the car scene industry because Poor Man's Process and um, Process Trailers and Green Screen all have downsides. And this sort of technology seems to alleviate most of them if we can just get the cost to a place where it's affordable for anyone but the biggest movies or television shows. Cine Gear was a heap of fun. I really like going and running into all the other people that do what I do there, uh, meeting the people that I own the email with, meeting the people that uh, make this kind of gear and making new connections. Uh, it is a lot of fun to be on the Paramount set and uh, you know, hanging out in the sound stages and walking down Michael Bay Avenue. Uh, it is a real blast, I think. Um, if you get the chance to go uh, in Atlanta or next year in LA, definitely take it. It's, it's a lot of fun. That's my wrap up of Cinegear 2019. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.